we are welcoming back our viewers. This is the third video of the 24th chapter of the Crystal Clear Electronics Curriculum on Control and Regulation. We will summarize the pros and cons of control and regulation and then start our little project on motor RPM control. My partner is Zoran Jurica and I'm Ambrus Zarei. Welcome to all of you. In today's exciting project, we will use a microcontroller and the UART communication converter. But before we get started, let's quickly summarize the differences between control and regulation. Understanding the concept of control and regulation, it is reasonable to ask which group of microcontroller projects we have worked on so far, the ones that have been previously seen at Crystal Clear Electronics. From a control engineering point of view, they were all control tasks. We used several sensors, such as the LDR or light sensitive resistor, and the NTC resistor used for sensing temperature, which will be installed now. We also used interfering peripherals, such as a piezo actuator or a fan. However, it's worth noting that so far these have only been used separately, so we haven't yet built a closed loop with a sensor and an actuator. But if you take the reference signal of the control process from a sensor and use that signal to operate a peripheral, it may not mean that it is a regulation. Exactly. For example, if you have a temperature sensor, let's say, and you use the measured signal to control the RPM of a fan blowing cold air from outside, it may not be regulation. For instance, if a control unit is able to turn on the fan located in the kitchen, when the temperature is above the ideal, then we are talking about an open loop control process if the two premises are independent from each other. More precisely, they're unable to achieve heat transfer, so like the room and the kitchen. However, if the fan located in one room can circulate cooler air to the other one, then it is a closed loop control because the circle is closed. So we can only talk about regulation if the loop is closed. Therefore, the intervention has an effect on the quantity detected. In the example, the fan should also affect the temperature in the kitchen if the temperature sensor is placed there. Exactly. And there's another interesting example, the dimmer with a coil knob, whose name is unfortunately misused in the language. After all, we know that there is usually no light sensor of any kind placed near the lamp to measure the intensity of the illumination. The chain of control is, therefore, open and not a closed loop. So, it is in fact a control process, not a regulation process. If there were a light sensor, then of course it would be a control, but now we should call it an illumination controller. I now feel that we are well equipped with the necessary theoretical knowledge, so let's get on with making a real device. It's gonna be very exciting. The following example will be, like most previous tasks were, an open loop control task. However, we will now implement the control device that is configurable through UART, the universal asynchronous transceiver. There will be a fan that we want to turn on or off depending on the temperature. Using the analog to digital converter or ADC periphery of the microcontroller, we will measure the voltage across a temperature-dependent resistor called an NTC. To do this, we will make a voltage divider. So, it includes another resistor. From its voltage, we will be able to calculate the NTC resistance and from that, the temperature in our program. On a serial board, we will receive the temperature above which the fan should be turned on. To make the hardware, we've built the circuit shown in the figure. The PA1 pin will be the voltage divider with the temperature dependent resistor. The fan is connected to the PD7 pin along with an n-channel incremental MOSFET, which you have already learned about in the switching devices in chapter 7. To download the firmware to the microcontroller, open the project KE241. Configurable control on the website of the curriculum. 
We have already covered all the peripherals needed in the previous chapter, so we won't explain their configuration here again. So, now that we've seen the schematic, Zalan, please show us which part is which on the actual physical implementation. That's right. So here we have the microcontroller, the NTC resistor connected to it, and this other resistor. These two components together form a voltage divider. Here we have the MOSFET connected to the other pin of the microcontroller, completed by the resistor, and the fan connected to the MOSFET. After opening the development environment and the project as usual, let's take a look at the code. The important things are all in the whole infinite loop. The AD conversion and the UART receiving are implemented in with interrupts. Only the values are saved there, so the processor spends less time executing the interrupt. Calculations and evaluations are executed in an infinite loop with a specific timing, in this case in every second. At first, the value of the AD conversion is converted to voltage. The ADC underscore value variable stores the voltage measured between 0 and 5 volts on 8 bits. This means that the UNTC is equal to the variable called ADC value divided by 256 multiplied by the maximum voltage value of 5 volts. This formula determines the measured voltage. If we write this into our program, we would experience that the value of UNTC will always be 0 volts. This is because ADC underscore value is a number between 0 and 255. Dividing this by 256, the processor will give 0 as a result as they are both integers. When dividing integers, the processor will always return the integer part of the result. Furthermore, if we would like to express the measured voltage in volts, it requires using fractions. There is only a limited support for this in the ATmega16A microcontroller, for this reason we should find another solution. Calculate the measured voltage in millivolts. The formula will finally look like this. The UNTC voltage is equal to the ADC value multiplied by 5000 divided by 256 to get millivolts. However, we should also pay attention to the fact that if a number between 0 and 255 is multiplied by 5000 becomes a number between 0 and 1.275 million which can only be stored in a 32-bit variable, so we also have to execute the operation with 32-bit numbers. And the numbers 5000 and 256 should be placed in a constant value variable. So what happened is that the NTC resistance value, which is temperature dependent, was converted to a number, which is ADC underscore value here in the code. And from that, we had to calculate the voltage. And the voltage is needed to infer the temperature. To do this, you need to know the voltage temperature characteristics of the NTC resistor. Previously, we already examined how the voltage in an NTC thermistor varies with temperature. You can see it in the figure. We can see that the blue curve is quite straight between minus 10 degrees Celsius and plus 40 degrees Celsius. By fitting a line, we can convert the voltage measured in millivolts to a temperature in degrees Celsius. Finding the optimal fit is a complicated mathematical process, so please accept without explanation that we will get the following equation. The temperature T equals minus 0 0.0172 multiplied by the UNTC plus 60.25 degrees Celsius. Minus 0 0.0172 refers to the steepness of the line and 60.25 degrees Celsius refers to the vertical direction of the shift. Because of the same considerations as above, the equation is modified as follows. T equals minus 172 multiplied by U NTC plus 602.530 and this whole quantity in brackets is divided by 10,000 to get the temperature in degrees Celsius. And based on that, we have to decide whether to run the fan, right? Exactly. Let's go into the if structure in our program code. The threshold value read through UART is compared with the temperature calculated with the equation above to set the duty cycle of the PWM, which controls the fan. By default, 
we will only set 0% or 100%, so either off or on. At the end of the program, the measured and calculated values are printed, together with the threshold, which is called the limit in the code. This makes it easier to check the correct operation of the program. Program the microcontroller, connect it to your computer via USB, and run the HTERM program used in the UART chapter of the curriculum. Use 4800 baud rate and 8 bit data rate, 1 stop bit, no parity. This setting is shown in the figure. Then, after pressing connect, we will see that the NTC voltage values measured at consecutive time moments, the temperatures calculated from this and the currently set limit value are lined up one below the other. The temperatures calculated from this and the currently set limit value are lined up one below the other. And then all that is needed to show the setting of this limit. To be able to change the limit, that is the variable code limit, change the type of input control from ASCII to decimal. Type in an arbitrary number between 0 and 255, for example, it is 27, and hit enter to send it to the microcontroller. This number represents the limit in degrees Celsius. In the output message sent every second, you can see that the limit value has changed to the number you entered. If you heat the NTC thermistor with your hands, you can see that the voltage on it is decreasing and the temperature is rising at the same time. As soon as this exceeds the limit, the fan will turn on and then turn off when you release the thermometer and it starts to cool down to room temperature. With this, we implemented the temperature dependent and configurable control of the fan. So why exactly do we not have regulation and why do we have control? Can you tell me? Because the fan doesn't cool the NTC resistor, more precisely its surroundings. But once we could make sure that the fan really blows cool air on the resistor, the control circuit would close, so a closed loop would form. And from then on, we could talk about regulation. That's right. So if this fan were now facing this way, we'd have regulation, if I understand correctly. Yes, and you'd have to guarantee that it really blows cold air on it, which is not necessarily the case here. Our device is well constructed. If you feel motivated and energized, try to add some additional information, so to speak, as homework. An additional option is that the duty cycle of the fan should vary gradually between the set limit and 10 Celsius above it. In addition, to the UART, the microcontroller should receive two values and gradually adjust the duty cycle between them. But for now, thank you for your attention. We hope you have been able to learn the material of chapter 24 with the help of the videos of Crystal Clear Electronics, which were on control and regulation. I thank Zolan for his help. Bye bye, I wish you a great learning experience. Thank you too, Ambrush. Remember that you will find all the relevant links in the video description. This was the last video of the Crystal Clear Electronics 1 curriculum. On behalf of my fellow presenters and our entire staff, we would like to thank you for following us and we hope that you will succeed in putting into practice what you have learned together with us. We encourage you all not to be afraid to implement your own ideas in the form of new and unique hardware and software. We also recommend that those of you who are captivated by this world take a look at the Crystal Clear Electronics 2 curriculum which uses a specifically modern 32-bit ARM microcontroller to demonstrate the advanced possibilities of embedded electronics programming. On behalf of the whole staff, we say goodbye. See you again in Crystal Clear Electronics 2. Bye! Bye.